Well, hello guys and welcome to the channel. I figured since we're all quarantined at home because of this coronavirus, I may as well just do an update vlog video and let you guys know what's going on with the Red Lion Garage. As you can see, that is the brand new addition. We replaced our 2018 Tesla Model 3 Performance with a Subaru? I know what you're thinking, why on earth would I downgrade to a gas car that's considerably slower, that's considerably less expensive, that's also not really what an enthusiast buys. But as you can see, we still have our long-term Porsche Cayman GTS. That car is a lease car, so I can't really get rid of it as quickly as I'd like, especially when uh, shit hit the fan with the coronavirus. It's been kind of hard to sell, but we're eventually gonna get rid of that. This is essentially the new car that is for my spouse um, because the Model 3 Performance was technically supposed to be a redline car only, but he ended up driving it for the course of a year and a half. This is a car that I got specifically for several reasons, and we're gonna go over what those reasons are in just a moment. And because I now have a Subaru Outback in my garage, I've expanded my wardrobe here on flannel because Lesbian is here. Subaru has a reputation for attracting a certain type of buyer. And Alex on Autos, if you're watching this, please don't be cracking those lesbian jokes anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and embrace it. In fact, I've embraced it with several things. Because this is my spouse's car, I've added a couple of stickers to the back of the car. This is just the start of many. Uh, this is the first sticker, of course, the hashtag dad wagon. And of course, because we have a new puppy, you guys may have saw him on the Instagram a couple times, Cedar. Uh, there's a sticker there. There's gonna be probably more stickers on this car. And you guys know I hate stickers on any car, but you have to keep in mind, this is not a red line car. This is a car that that was purchased for my spouse to use as his daily driver. So how and why did we decide on a 2020 Subaru Outback? Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, my spouse, as much as I love him, is not the same kind of car enthusiast that I am. Um, there are just people out there that love cars or say they like cars, but they don't quite take care of them. They aren't quite as OCD about certain things as you know, probably most of you who are watching this video. And my recommendation is get a car that you don't really care about as much if it gets damaged, if things get curbed, if the interior gets dirty. Because the Model 3, as much as I loved that car, I never really considered it to be something that I would take care of as um, meticulously as the Cayman because I knew that my spouse would be driving it more often. So basically when it was time to replace that car, this Outback is not necessarily the direct replacement for it. I have a Model Y Performance on order that should be coming, um, was supposed to be coming by the summer. Now it's been delayed until fall, winter because of the coronavirus pandemic. So that is technically the car that will replace the Model 3. This is just a car that needed to basically replace my spouse's 2015 or 14 Subaru Forester that he had for three years before he met me. So if you look at it, you know, as a upgrade, this is a huge upgrade from that because that Forester had the base engine. It wasn't a turbo. It was basically a premium model. It was like a mid trim. Didn't have all the bells and whistles that you can get in modern Subarus today. And how we came to this car was basically my spouse either wanted a Kia Stinger GT or a Jeep Wrangler, or he wanted a truck. And the thing is about all three of them, they're completely different. And that's the majority of car shoppers in the, in the world or in the US. They want completely different things. They're not necessarily shopping in the same segment of vehicle. I learned that when I worked in sales. And basically when we were looking at the truck, you know, he wanted an electric truck, which they're just not available right now. The Tesla truck isn't here yet. The Rivian is probably by the end of the year, but we needed to get something soon. Um, the F-150 is about to be replaced. The Ram is nice, but it's just a little bit too big. And my uh, significant other didn't like the styling of the way that truck looked on the outside. Love the styling of the GMC Sierra AT4, but the interior he was not a big fan of, uh, which I wasn't a big fan of either. I think it needs an emergency refresh that the new Tahoe and Yukon have on the inside. And of course, the Tundra is old. The Titan is not what I would say a class leading truck either. So the trucks were basically ruled out. He also didn't like the compact midsize trucks. They weren't big enough for him because he's a Southern boy from Alabama and he really likes those big trucks. It's what he you know, has always wanted his whole life, which we'll have to get to later on. The Stinger GT, I immediately ruled out because I knew it's a car that I would love to have in the, uh, you know, as his daily, but with its big 19 inch wheels, you know, it's a hatchback, but it doesn't really have that much space on the inside. I knew that it would also get 
damaged, the wheels would get damaged, we would run out of space on the inside because of the dog. Um, the back seat is also pretty tiny. This Outback has a massive back seat because remember, this is essentially our family car. It's probably a sign that I'm getting older because now I'm looking for comfort, back seat space, practicality in the trunk, basically what every American family is looking for nowadays. And the Outback just kind of fit that bill. Yes, this car is extremely boring to drive and somewhat boring to look at as well, but gliding around here, you know, at 40 miles an hour, it has the most comfortable ride ever, like really soft, controlled ride, very quiet on the inside. With the turbo engine, it also has plenty of power. It's a little laggy off the line, but once the turbo kicks in, once the CVT puts the engine in the meat of its power band, this is a car that has plenty of power. And it actually surprised my spouse even. He's been super used to driving that Tesla, and he was actually really happy about how quick this car accelerates because, again, this thing reminds him a lot of his Subaru. You can do basically all the Subaru things, which he did with his Forester. You can take this thing off-roading, which we've done. You can drive this thing up curbs or you can hit the wheels along the curbs and you don't have to worry about the wheel, the rims getting damaged. Ooh, this is where the car could offer a 360 camera. Why don't you offer it Subaru? All they offer is this little front camera that is a pretty crappy quality resolution. And I just don't see why Subaru doesn't offer a 360. Even on the Ascent, they don't offer a 360. And you can put all sorts of things in this car, in the back seat, in the trunk area, and I don't care if the interior gets a little beat up. The Tesla's interior wasn't actually beat up when we got rid of it, but with its white leather, the fact that it says it's a sedan, you know, it's not really a rugged car that's built to take a beating. It was starting to drive me crazy, and it's one of the reasons why we had to get something like this. And here we go. This is the main reason why Subaru owners love their Subarus. Cedar. Up, come on, Cedar, up, come on. Up, Cedar, 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 up. Come on, you can do it. Come on, Cedar, up. Cedar, come on, come on, up. Cedar, yes, come on, I told you to come up here. You can do it, you can do it, jump. Come on, Cedar, you can do it. Oh, goodness, I'm just gonna have to pick your butt up. Arr. Good boy. Good boy. Cedar's still kind of a puppy, so he's still learning to actually jump up in the actual trunk of the Outback, but he has learned, Cedar, stay, 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 Cedar, stay. That whenever we go for a drive, he will just stay there as we close the lift gate. Good boy, good boy. Cedar. Come on, bud. Cedar. Come on. Come on. Oh, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Yeah. Good boy, Cedar. Now granted, the Subaru Outback is definitely not perfect. My spouse is not in love with the infotainment system, which I don't like either. I think the CarPlay, as you can see there, is ridiculously small. It should be taking up the whole screen instead of having this useless real estate here. For a car that's fully loaded at $40,000, it's also missing rain-sensing wipers. I don't know why Subaru forgot to put you know, rain-sensing windshield wipers on this top trim touring, but it should have that. I don't like the fact that it doesn't have LED turn signals at the front or the rear, but it does have those steering adaptable, adaptive LED headlights and fog lights, which is definitely nice. No heads-up display, which would also be nice. Um, 
The thing about this car is it's very much a dad wagon, which is exactly why I got that sticker on the back that says dad wagon. But it's kind of a cool thing because I've seen people modify their Outbacks with more ground clearance or knobbier all-terrain tires, which I actually am planning to put some all-terrain tires on this car because I think it would look a lot better and it would improve the off-road capability. It might mess with the ride quality and fuel economy a little bit, which by the way, we've been averaging around uh, 23 MPG in this car, uh, which is not bad. On the highway, it gets around 32 MPG. So again, pretty good gas mileage better than the Stinger, better than a Jeep Wrangler as well. A Jeep Wrangler just wouldn't get the kind of gas mileage and it wouldn't be as comfortable as this car. Um, so the Outback is definitely a great all-around car and it's pretty easy to see why this thing is the best-selling station wagon that you can find in America. And it's one of the only successful station wagons from a mainstream brand. Everyone else is from a luxury brand you know, that costs twice or three times the price of this. So there you have it guys, the 2020 Subaru Outback XT that we just added to the garage. This is a car, again, that won't win very many contests for its sexy styling, its very sporty driving dynamics, or of course, its sex appeal like a car like the Model 3 Performance did, or like a Civic Type R, or a Kia Stinger GT. However, there's a lot to like about this car, and maybe it's just me getting older and the fact that I like how comfortable it is. I like that the turbo has plenty of power, and even though it's a CVT, it doesn't actually bother me quite as much because the CVT, as you guys saw, is responsive, it puts the engine right in the meat of the power band, it gets good gas mileage as well. This is a car that pretty much we can just drive until the wheels fall off for the next three to five years, or at least until the warranty's up, before we decide on moving on to a different vehicle. And, and keep in mind, the price of this thing was roughly half what I paid on the Model 3 at around $40,000 for this Touring. I also got a really good deal on it because of my connections with Subaru, and of course my local Subaru dealer that helped me. And really, it's a car that I can be comfortable with my spouse driving because I know it'll be safe, I know it'll be economical, I know he can put the dog or whatever in it because it's got a huge back seat, a big trunk, and I won't be freaking out with my OCD or my anxiety about the wheels getting damaged, about things getting scratched because it's a Subaru, it's designed and built to take the beating. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video showing you guys an update with the Redline Garage with the new vehicle that we just added. Keep in mind, there is that Model Y performance that will be coming later this year. It was supposed to be coming in the summertime, but of course with all of the stuff with the coronavirus, it's been postponed until fall, winter. So be sure to see uh, a video on that whenever we get that car coming. I also still need to get rid of the Cayman. It's still in the garage, but I'm actually kind of happy that I still had it because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to give you guys that video on the Cayman versus Supra comparison, which honestly, if you guys haven't checked that video out, go check it out. It's one of, it's one of the best work we've done. So a huge shout out to my videographer for putting together all the video work. It took a lot of editing for sure and it came out looking great. But hope you guys have enjoyed. Please be sure to like us on Instagram if you haven't done so at redline underscore reviews like us on Facebook and as always guys please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews thank you so much for watching I'll catch you all in the next video